During June and July, I spent time with my wife, Lisa, as she took her first sabbatical after 30 years in the rabbinate. We were close to the ocean for most of it in Cape Elizabeth, Maine, just outside of Portland. When we arrived in early June, we were greeted by a couple of lovely Mainers. Yep. <laughs> Carpenters who were replacing some wood shingles on the house's exterior. After a few days, they finished their work, packed up, and departed. But they left us a wonderful gift, the front section of a newspaper they had found under the old clapboards, pierced with nail holes, yellowed and crumbling. The newspaper was nevertheless in one piece and surprisingly readable. The Portland Evening News, Friday, September 3rd, 1920. It was the best present anyone could have left to rabbis. <laughs> Even before we looked at the headlines, we knew that this unique treasure from over 100 years ago would be the inspiration for this Rosh Hashanah sermon. <laughs> As we perused the front page, three articles immediately captured our attention. Girl murdered and lover wounded riding in an auto. Voter registration of women this morning in Portland reaches 308. Delegates arrive at the synagogue in Portland for the big Hebrew convention this weekend. The French have a saying, plus sa chance, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The very same sentiment is expressed in the Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes. Mashahaya kavarhu, the asher lihiot kavar haya. What happens now has already happened in the past, and what will happen in the future has happened before. What an appropriate and moving message about the cyclical nature of Jewish time. Life goes around, and built into our existence is a puzzling reality. While we may think that our experiences are unique, they are only our perceptions. Life's moments may seem new, but they are only new to us. The notion of time as a circle means that history repeats itself and nothing is ever really new. Joni Mitchell expressed it best. And the seasons, they go round and round, and the painted ponies go up and down. We're captive on a carousel of time. We can't return. We can only look behind from where we came and go round and round and round in the circle game. On Rosh Hashanah, each new year, our tradition asks us to consider how we have used time in the past year and how we make sense of our time on Earth. The new year calls us to focus not on how we human beings act in and upon time, but rather on how time shapes and transforms us. So let us do that this morning with the assistance of a ragged old newspaper that served for over 100 years as insulation for a home in Maine. The front page news about gun violence is identical to what we witness today. A young couple engaged to be married riding along the parkway in a closed vehicle when a masked man attempted to stop them. The masked man commenced firing several shots into the car. The woman died instantly, and her fiancé is not expected to survive. No motive has been found. Plus sa chance, Plus c'est la même chose. 
gun violence is still front page news today. A recent study released by Everytown for Gun Safety, a nonpartisan group advocating against gun violence, reported that between August 2021 and May 2022, our nation saw 193 incidents of deadly gunfire, more than double the total of the previous year. This fall, faculty members from elementary through graduate schools are counting the glue sticks, organizing classrooms, and preparing curricula. Yet, for the first time, some are spending time asking some tough questions. Does the door have plate glass? How will I cover it? Does the door lock from the inside? Do the windows open wide enough to get through? How far is the drop to the ground? Some have gone further. Mandy, a kindergarten teacher, kindergarten teacher in Ohio writes, teachers just feel helpless and safety drills are not enough. Mandy decided that she needed something more powerful, a nine millimeter Glock and training that would allow her to carry a gun in her school. So perhaps Ecclesiastes was wrong and maybe things really do change. Maybe we can change the future so that Mandy can focus on the three R's and not how to fire her gun. Granted, we know that some progress has been made in stemming this national crisis, but realize it did take several mass shootings before President Biden finally signed into law the first major gun safety legislation passed in decades. And thankfully, this law includes funding for school safety and state crisis intervention programs. More progress is needed, but we must ask 100 years later how much has changed and how much has stayed the same. What is our role in breaking those repetitive cycles so that we feel empowered to make a difference? We must champion the change. Voter registration of women this morning in Portland reaches 308. As I looked at the old newspaper, I realized that the 19th Amendment had only been ratified by Congress just weeks before the newspaper was published, on August 18th, 1920. In Portland, Maine, and throughout the country, women began to exercise their right to register and vote for the first time in this country's history. Indeed, a monumental change in the status of women was long in the making and vitally important. Plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. And yet, here too we find ourselves taking two steps forward and three steps back. Roe versus Wade, the landmark decision of nearly half a century ago, which acknowledged that women had the right to their reproductive choices, was the fulfillment of the now 100-year-old women's suffrage movement. The recent overturning of Roe versus Wade by the Supreme Court this spring will have long-term consequences for our children and our grandchildren, both women and men. In a country in which a woman can become a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, run for President of the United States, and serve in the armed forces, how is it possible that she does not have a constitutional right to make autonomous decisions about what is best for her body, her family, her home? This Supreme Court decision will be exponentially devastating for women of color and women experiencing poverty. In a June 2022 New Yorker article, Gia Tolentino says it is not just what we are going, that we are going back to a time when women lacked rights. She claims that the future will actually be worse than the past. She writes, the future that we now inhabit will not resemble the past before Roe when women sought out illegal abortions 
and not infrequently found death. However, maybe Ecclesiastes was wrong, and we will make progress after all. It will only happen if we are willing to work tirelessly at the state level to change what feels like an enormous loss in the realms of both women's rights and human rights. Maybe with a woman of color serving as our vice president, we will be inspired to find new ways of using our right to vote to make life better for our daughters and granddaughters. Maybe we will leverage the hope reflected in the recent Pew Research Center survey 100 years after the 19th Amendment was ratified. The survey found that at least half of Americans today still say that granting women the right to vote has been the single most critical milestone in advancing the position of women in our country. We must work for that change. And finally, let us consider our Jewish community. I, I really have to admit that I was surprised to see an article about a young men's and women's Hebrew association conference on the front and center page in the 1920 Portland Evening Newspaper. It must have been a significant and visible occasion to appear right beside the women's voter registration report. While nothing was written about the program or the guest speakers, there was a great detail about how the conference hotels had been decorated for the weekend. And there was a sense of excitement as the Jewish community prepared for this auspicious event. While we can only guess on the topics on the meeting agenda for that meeting in Portland in 1920, today, 100 years later, Jewish leaders refused to accept Ecclesiastes' resignation that nothing new ever happens. In fact, they are loudly calling for a radical review and a shift in American Jewish communal priorities. We have heard their voices. These are not easy conversations to have because they are value-based and personal. Yet we must not shrink from discussing them. The synagogue of our youth has run its course. We can romanticize the past, but we cannot live there. The status quo is no longer an option and frankly, has never been a viable choice for reform or progressive Judaism. My own feeling is that we will either change or be changed. Plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. Are we going to listen? This is not new at all. The signs and patterns have been visible for a couple of decades. According to the Pew Foundation, the trajectory over the past decade has remained the same. We find the same patterns repeated. Declines in Jewish religious observance, shrinking Jewish day school enrollment, and increased rates of intermarriage. Do we hear the call? Are we prepared to act? The pessimists among us point to the decline of Judaism and Jews in America, a sign that we are disappearing with each successive year. We have had this group of people in our midst since the time when we wandered with Moses in the, de in the wilderness and could not imagine any type of future. However, I would argue that the Jewish community has been and will always be a work in progress. Why? Because the community and our synagogues are a reflection of us. And as such, they evolve just as we do. National programs sponsored by 20th century legacy Jewish organizations, such as the URJ, CJP, JNF, and UJA, do not appeal to or bring out our people anymore. Joining a synagogue is no longer automatic for Jewish families moving into the area, into Boston, Northborough, Southborough, Worcester, and Jews rarely kiss the ground at Ben-Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv the way our parents and grandparents did. 
So maybe Ecclesiastes was wrong after all, and history, Jewish history, is not doomed to meaningless repetition. To claim that the synagogue, the Jewish community, and Judaism is disappearing, I believe, is short-sighted. To assert that change will cause the Jewish community to cease to exist is an anathema to our history. Yes, anti-Semitism is rising, and there is reason to be vigilant. But I suggest that we are challenged as much internally by lethargy and fear and by an absence of Jewish passion, as we are being threatened by hate from the outside. In a June 2022 study conducted by our own Cohen Center at Brandeis University, researchers found that the Los Angeles Jewish community has actually grown by 25% in the last 25 years. The study's authors discovered that younger people appear more engaged in Jewish life than their elders, and their Jewish identities are more robust than those of their parents. Jewish scholar Jack Wertheimer wrote, what we are seeing is not a weakening of Jewish life, but merely a transition to new forms of Jewish identification. Rather than express their Jewishness through a religious participation, support for Israel and Jews world over, more Jews are now participating in Jewish cultural activities. They attend Jewish film festivals, visit Jewish museum exhibits, eat traditional Jewish foods, read Jewish books, and explore websites with Jewish content. Some have gone so far as to declare that the present moment represents a veritable renaissance of Jewish cultural life, even as other forms of Jewishness are in decline. Friends, we must be the change. So what do we learn from gun violence, the fight for equal rights, and the challenges of practicing Judaism in the present to preserve it for the future? That our children and our grandchildren are essential, and that we should not count them out. We learn that we have the power to improve their future and the Jewish future. We learn that change is inevitable, built into our Jewish narrative and human story. One of the greatest philosophers of our time, Jean-Luc Picard, <laughs> captain of the Starship Enterprise, once said, Someone once told me that time was a predator that stalked us all our lives. I rather believe that time is a companion that goes with us on the journey and reminds us to cherish every moment. Let us ask ourselves this day and every day, what messages will future generations find hidden in our walls? What gifts will we leave behind for those that come after us? Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova.